The first thing to cover in the cross-cut mode is a recommended operating position. Now most people tend to grab a power saw in their right hand and hold the wood in their left. Now that's okay for normal handheld use of a power saw, it's not the right way with the Triton Work Center for a couple of reasons. Firstly, you haven't got much room in there for hand access, especially if you've got a smaller saw and the table's up higher, you've got limited hand access, and you're also holding the wood quite a long way away from where it's actually going to be cut. And you might even find that you have a tendency to pivot the wood around the corner of the crosscut fence. So the best way to operate the machine is to stand on the right hand side at the switch box end, hold the wood with your right hand, which in most people is a stronger hand anyway, and use your left hand to push the power saw. It may feel a bit unnatural the first couple of times you do it, but you'll very quickly get used to it. The saw should slide very smoothly and you'll only need finger pressure to push it along, especially, as you must do, is spray the open faces of the bearing channels with a spray lubricant such as RP7 or WD40 at the start of each day's work and that makes it a very lovely smooth slide. So stand on the right, hold the saw with your left. You have the choice in the cross-cut mode of leaving the trigger locked on and using the switch at the front of the work center or you can undo the trigger strap, switch the power through at the front of the work center and then just use the trigger as normal to, to power up. However, if you've got a saw that's got a lot of saw slump where there's movement between the saw motor and the saw base, we do recommend that you have the power switched off, lock the trigger on, and then push the slide chassis by the corner of the slide chassis rather than touching the saw at all. Because if your saw's got a bit of wobble in it, you will aggravate it as you unconsciously twist during a cut. Okay, now let's do a cut. The way you hold the wood is either by gripping it firmly to the cross-cut fence, make sure your fingers don't go too far underneath the bearing channels. They can protrude a short distance, but nowhere near the actual line of the saw blade. Or you can prefer to bunch your fingers together and hold, press the wood down into that corner there against the table and against the cross-cut cross fence. I'll do this cut. Um, I'll unlock the trigger. I've got a good saw on here. I'll do this cut and see what happens at the end of the cut. When I cut all the way through, I left the saw where it was and I pulled this piece out sideways. The reason for pulling this out sideways is so that cut face doesn't suffer any recut damage because there is always a tendency that you'll slightly mark it if you pull the saw blade back when it's spinning. The other reason I didn't pull the saw back when it's spinning is this off cut. Now one little off cut like this, chances are you'll get away with it. If you are doing a number of pieces together, and you'll see that shortly, then one of these off cuts, especially a smaller one, could very easily vibrate in behind the saw blade after you've finished the cut. And then as you pull the saw back, the back of the teeth will hit that piece, shatter it, it'll go flying out, and it could damage your saw blade or your work center table. If you've got a saw with a very long base plate, you might have found that on your first cut, you didn't actually quite cut all the way through the wood. And that's because the slide chassis would have run out of travel before the midpoint of the blade got past the upstand of the MDF. Well, there's a simple solution to that. Simply pack out the MDF subfences by a small amount or replace them with, with some material slightly thicker. Or better still, make yourself some extended fence packers like this. Now, these two pieces used to be one straight piece of wood, 125 mil wide and about 50 thick. You want to make it fairly thick so that you're basically replicating that face again. Now I've cut them into two, but before I cut them, I drilled six millimeter holes at four places and I drove 6.35 millimeter or quarter inch hex bolts into there as far as they'd go. And then once they were fully engaged and had cut their own thread, I used an angle grinder to cut the heads off. I drilled matching holes through the MDF subfences and then I've basically got a doweled fit of these two subfences, extended subfences. 
always make sure that you can put a straight edge across there and that they're both exactly dead in line with no step or point of rocking. And now, what are those subfences for? Well, firstly, they bring the work a lot closer to you. Um, you'll notice that now I can hold the work here. I'm standing almost vertically. If you have a back problem, you may want to consider packing them out even further. It does limit the width of material you're cutting, but if you're mainly cutting stud type material, then this way you can work almost vertically very comfortably. Secondly, they uh, give you somewhere safe to park your saw while the blade is coasting to a halt. And that means that you can remove your workpiece to the left or the right hand side of the saw. You can flick off cuts off the table without any danger of hitting the spinning saw blade. Thirdly, if your power saw has a bit of arbor float, that is a sloppiness in the saw blade sideways, giving you a ridged cut or a high spot in the cut, then you may well find that it's, imp that it's improved by the addition of these subfences. And finally, you'll see a very good use of these subfences when we get into climb cutting in a few minutes time. Lining up your cross cuts is simplicity itself if you use the gap between the two MDF subfences as a sighting notch. And all you do is mark your piece of wood and place it on the right hand side of the notch or the left hand side of the notch, depends on where you want the waist to be, and then make your cut. Now, if in due course you find that you've lost a nice clean edge on your MDF fences, or the slot is slightly, the gap is slightly wider than your saw blade is cutting, it's a simple matter to undo the four screws holding the MDF sub fences to the crosscut fence and move the fences slightly closer together and then recut them and create yourself a nice new accurate notch exactly where your saw blade is going to pass. Another couple of points about cross cutting are that you always cut your work with the good face down, which is the exact opposite of the way it is in the table saw mode where the good face is up. Reason being that in the cross cut mode, the saw teeth cut upwards on the upstroke, and so the uppermost face will be the most splintered with the most tear out, so cut it with a good face down on the table. Secondly, if you're cutting bowed material, cut it also with the bow facing down, because if you cut it the other way around with the bow facing up, the material will tend to jam on the saw blade as you finish the cut. And I shouldn't have to mention it at this point in the video, always consider your off cut. Make sure if you're cutting a long, heavy piece that you're not just hanging it out there in the breeze because as you cut through, it will drop. Have it supported, preferably on a Triton multi-stand. The feed rate, or the speed at which you push the saw, is just as important in the cross-cut mode as in the table saw mode. And again, it will depend on the density of the material you're cutting, from particle board through hardwood to pine. Uh, it'll also depend on the power of your saw and the quality and sharpness of your blade. Trial and error is recommended here. Uh, make sure you're not overloading the saw by pushing too fast, nor pushing too slowly and burnishing the end of your piece of wood. Never force a dull blade to cut, get it sharpened or replace it, and never jerk the spinning saw blade into the wood. Feed it in gently. Uh, it's also obviously pretty important that you never start off the saw with the teeth in contact with the wood. In the cross-cut mode, the teeth cut on the upstroke and the piece of wood will fly up if you're in contact with it without when you switch on. 